Hey guys, this is Jar Arts Fire and welcome to another editing tutorial. Now, I just want to say a massive thank you to the response I got on the cloning um, tutorial. It was got amazing feedback. It's currently on 23 likes, which is awesome. I really appreciate that, guys. And let's try and get a nice amount of likes on this one as well. Let's try and actually let's try and get for the same amount of likes. Let's try and go for like 20 likes because I'm like I want to go for the tough ones. Um, but yeah, I'm also on 190 subscribers, so 10 more till 200. So at 200, I might do an editing contest if you guys would be interested in that. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna get on with this, with this tutorial. Um, it's pretty cool. It's like a scope power up effect. So as he scopes in, now it does look pretty bad in slow motion. Not gonna lie, but when it's actually play, when the clip's playing, it looks really cool. So I'm just gonna play this through and turn it down because it's quite loud. Um, and then we'll get started on how to make it. So you see there, it looks pretty cool. Um, builds up, it's kind of added in some sound effects. So it actually sounds, looks really good. And this, this the, the ring that comes out just looks awesome, in my opinion. But let's just get right on, on creating this. I'm just gonna go to, uh, just organize myself a bit here. Make a new button there. Okay, we're gonna go new composition. We're gonna make it something like four seconds long. Obviously make sure it's 1280 by 720 like this um, stick it in there call it tutorial right so we've got a clip here now he scopes in he misses a shot here then he scopes in here there we go that's where the first scope is so hit shift 1 to make a marker go to where he unscopes which is there so hit shift 2 to make the second marker now we can actually just zoom in to just this area here. Okay, so now we need to create the circles. So to do this, you want to make a new composition, make it 500 by 500. Length doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna call this circle. Uh, drag that into the tutorial file. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna double click on the ellipse tool here. And sorry, my bad. We need to make sure there's a red fill it doesn't matter what the color fill is, doesn't make a difference. Hit zero, well it does obviously, if it's red then it's gonna be red, so you can make it whatever you want. You then wanna double click the ellipse tool and you've got a red circle. Um, I'm just gonna decrease the scale to 99, just so that edges don't overlap the composition. And then back in the tutorial file, we're gonna to go to, we can hit one on our keyboard and it takes us back to the first marker here. We're gonna drag the circle on top here to the start like this. I'm actually just going to scale up to certain matches and position it and so on. Doesn't really have to be super exact. Okay, there we go. So now we are actually going to um, bring the opacity down a little bit just so we can see what we're doing. But what we do is we change the mode to add and then we bring the opacity down. Now you can either use add or you can use overlay. Now overlay looks pretty cool. I'm actually going to use overlay in this example. Um, I used add in the one I showed you at the beginning, but we will be different and use overlay. So now you want to grab the pen tool on the circle and select your um, the like each quadrant of the scope. I don't even know how well that did it. Uh, just kind of play around with the positioning here. And then, if you see what happens when you do something like this, this happens. So, to fix that, you want to um, drag this one up, but while still keeping it. Now, the further, the closer you're zoomed in, the easier it is to um, adjust. No, it can be hard to get it exactly right. That should, there we go. So, that's pretty much there. Now, we're just going to reconnect it. Here, there we go. So as you can see, we've got one of the quadrants selected, like so. So now we want to duplicate that layer. We want to then hit R and we want to rotate it like so. So rotate it 90 degrees and boom, we've done that. Now we want to duplicate it again. Rotate it again, 90 degrees. Oh, so it's at 180 now. 
like so. And then we want to duplicate it again, but I'm duplicating this by holding Command D or Control D. And then rotate it again so it's at 270. Oh, there we go. So now we've got our four scopes lined up. Now what we need to do, we need to um, get them to do that, the kind of the fading thing. Let's do that. You want to go into the original circle comp. You want to hold Shift Command C to pre-compose or go to layer pre-compose. You want to click move all attributes into the composition and we want to call this circle base like that. And now you can then double click on the ellipse tool. So it creates a mask around a circle mask. You then want to bring the expansion down to minus 250. So it's gone completely. You then want to go to where he's finished, so here, and bring it up to zero. So where the scope finishes. So as you can see, it does this. But we want to do it individually and offset it, which means that this last keyframe, all of them have to have been done except the last one at this point. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in here. Zoom out a little bit more. Okay, there we go. Now you can see there are roughly 36 keyframes here. So what we want to do is we want to go back to 16. And we want to drag this back to 16 here. Then half of 16 is 8. So I'm going to take it back to 8. So now what happens is it takes 8 frames to scope in. So now all we need to do is select these and drag them along till the last one's done. So it was like, poof, now I'll just start doing it. Then we want to go to what the next one's done and select the top two, like so. And go to where that one's done. And now just select the top one, offset it like this, like so. And boom. So there we go. So now, if we zoom out a bit, you'll see boom, 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 boom. They all fade in off offsetedly, offsetedly, that's a little bit funny. Now, we want it to also finish there, so we don't want this them to be visible. So you can hold command or control left um, left to right arrows to go back in back the keyframes. And then you press alt to close square bracket and Skype go away. So that basically ends all the compositions there. Then you go forward a frame and you can see there's nothing there. So We've done this now, we've done the main part. Now what we want to do is when it when it completes, so when it gets to here, we want to have a little bulge so it kind of the scale increases. So to do that, we want to duplicate the actual clip, hold command D, and where you want it to start, you want to press the Alt Open Square Bracket button. You're then going to go forward to where he finishes scoping in and press the Alt Square Bracket button. So now we've just got a short clip here. We can now um, add a mask around just the scope, so I'll down shift, drag a circle mask like so go like roughly there we go, it doesn't have to be exact, so if we hide it you can see that it's just the scope selected we can then hit the S button to bring up scale, hit the stopwatch go to the middle here, I'm going to go for two frames bring the scale up a bit, something like that and I want to go forward to where he finishes, which is right about here, and bring it back down to 100. So now, as you can see, as these all finish scoping in, the scope kind of bulges and then comes back. But the thing is, the red isn't bulging with it. So to fix this, we want to select all the circle layers that we have, hit S, bring up scale, keyframe them, go to the next frame, holding Command, right arrow key again, and just scale it up so it's the same approximate size. Go for the next frame, and again, just bring it up. It's not, um, it's pretty much pretty logical, really. Forward another frame, bring it down, like uh, so. Another frame, bring it down again, like that, and then boom. So now, if we zoom out again, and I show you what we've got, we've got boom, 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 boom. Scope then bulges. Now that's a pretty cool effect already, but the thing is it doesn't feel complete. So what I did was, if I show you, I added in that this circle bulge coming out here. Now obviously the um, 
the layers look a bit different because I feathered them on this one but obviously you don't need to feather them and so on so you want to go back to the tutorial and you want to make a new composition 500 by 500 again I'm going to call it ring and we can use the same method we used in the scope rings tutorial to do this we're going to um, select the ellipse tool make sure there's no fill by clicking on fill then clicking the one with the cross then making the stroke 15 then we're just going to double click on the ellipse tool and now we have a little stroke now we're going to bring the scale down so I cover the like the going in depth into how to do this in the scope rings tutorial um, so you want to go to contents ellipse stroke where it says dashes hit the arrow twice now bring the dash up so something like uh, maybe a bit more something like that there we go that's pretty cool so just bring the dash up to say it's 88 there so just where it, where it looks nice and you want to go back to the tutorial layer you want to go to where you want the thingy to start so we can say start it uh, it can start kind of scaling up here we can then drag the ring above the red layer um, align it with our um, our playhead so in the moment it just doesn't do anything it's just there now the first thing we want to do is hit the scale button scale down to zero so it's un invisible and then hit the stopwatch go forward a frame and actually go forward a couple frames see something like there just before the bulge happens and just scale it up something like that then you want to go to the next frame and obviously the scale is starting to happen so you want to scale it back up um, further up like so and you want to scale it up even further and start bringing it down again just bring it down a bit further and then it needs to cut out here so we're going to hit alt um, close square bracket so now it stops okay so now we've got the basics this goes poof. but we need to add some more effects to it so we're going to go to ring we're going to hit the R and we're going to hit the stopwatch go to the end and we're going to spin it by say four times so hit the first number to four so now it will do four 360 degree rotations so now if we watch you'll see it is actually spinning but because there aren't that many frames it's quite hard to see but yeah, so we've got that. Now there are a couple more things you can do. You can add a glow to the ring. So effect, stylize, glow. Now I'm just gonna leave the default settings on, they look quite nice. You can then go to effect. If you have the trap code plugins, you can go effect, trap code, shine. Bring the um, ray length down quite a bit. Somewhere like 0.2 looks pretty cool. So now it kind of matches the reds and so on. Now there's another thing which is quite a nice effect, you can add motion blur to the ring. Now to do this you want to go to the ring layer, you want to hit toggle switches mode until you've got the three boxes here. The circles here where it says motion blur simulate shutter duration, you want to click the little box so that the circles appear in the box for the ring layer and then click these these circles here for the motion blur to turn on. So now it looks pretty cool and it has this, got this motion blur to it, and it's a really nice effect. Um, so we've got that, now there are a couple more things you can do, you can add feathers to the masks on these, so we just increase the feathers, just say 20, 20, 20, 20, so as you can see as they come in now they're a bit, they're feathered, you can't, and then if you want to feather these edges, you go to the circle and then you have to turn the feather on here so bring the feather up to something like that so 47 and then if you go to tutorial you'll see as it comes in now it is the edges are feathered but when they're feathered you can see they obviously don't fill the whole area completely and it doesn't fill as um, like heads up display like like as futuristically so I'm, I'm not going to add any feathers um, I think it actually looks cooler without um, in the original example there was quite a bit of feathering and because there was add you can see it's got these kind of extra lines here but obviously if you change the overlay mode um, the blending mode then it's going to change quite a bit so we've got this so now we've got the pretty, pretty much it's pretty much done now you can obviously don't have to do red you can do whatever color you want um, I think red looks pretty cool 
you can obviously change the opacity if you're on that bright. So say 50 opacity, so it goes boof, 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 like this, and then it looks pretty cool in my opinion. And that actually looks really cool. Now there's one thing that I did was add in a sound effect, a transformer sound effect. Now I got this in a pack, an editing pack, I can't remember what pack it was, but if you like look up um, transformer sound effects or something, I'm sure you'll find it, you can then just drag that in to roughly there, hit LL to run the audio, now this is quite a long one, that's what she said, <laughs> I'm just going to cut it here, so like so, so now, that looks pretty cool, so just one other thing, you can add in a song, so I'm just adding the background track, um, go try and find the drop in the song, it's quite far into it. But yeah, like, um, this is a pretty cool tutorial. I'm gonna start definitely start using this in more um, videos, and it's definitely a nice way to start like for the first clip in a edit. So keep that in mind. Uh, okay, so he shoots here. So there's the drop. Okay, we want to start it roughly here. Now you can also, um, I just save this. You can add a. Uh, there, can't speak, colour correction, so command alt y or control alt y to bring up an adjustment layer, uh, go to looks, so I'll just add a quick colour correction here, just so I can show you guys what the full potential of how it looks, I'm going to do with this one, is it this one I like, I uh, can't remember which one I used, might have been that one, uh, no but that's a pretty nice one anyway, so as you see the HUD comes up, the scope comes out and it looks really really cool and then if we just control s that and then we'll ram preview it to show you guys how it looks so yeah like give me tutorial suggestions guys i'm struggling to come up with new ideas so if there's anything you want to see show me and i'll try and make it for you um i'm always up for trying new effects so yeah just comment in the sections what you comment section what you want to see because i'll do these tutorials for you guys so okay let's just look see how, how this looks Now I forgot that this is quite a quiet song. It's like um, let's just have another look quickly. Now that looks really cool. Like the sound effect really makes it. So if we just hold down Command and watch through this. It's just, it looks really nice with the sound effect, the colour correction, and just the rings exploding. Like, it all happens so fast, it's hard to see what actually happens. So, you can obviously add a motion blur to the rings if you want. Um, no, because they don't move that fast, not much will change. But yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Please leave a like. Let's try and get 15 likes, maybe 20. Um, comment in the sec comment section on other tutorials you want to see. Hope you have a good Saturday, since it's Saturday today, and I shall see you guys later.